According to a recent study from North Carolina State University, soil temperature can be used to effectively track and forecast the movement of pests. These powerful pests annihilate vegetables and other major crops. How can soil temperature predict the spread of pests and crops? How were the agricultural scientists' experiments carried out? Stay tuned to find out all the important unanswered questions we need answered. First up, how did the scientists conduct the experiment? A recent study from North Carolina State University shows that soil temperature can be used to efficiently track and forecast the movement of the maize earwork or Helicoverpazia, a significant pest that decimates vegetable crops like corn, cotton, soybeans, peppers, and tomatoes. Farmers may be able to more effectively control the insect, lowering the cost and negative effects of pesticide use if they can monitor the pest and predict where they will appear. To help comprehend overwintering success or how well the pest can survive underground during the colder winter months, the researchers merged historical soil temperature data with long-term corn earworm monitoring data and information on how the pest survives cold temperatures in a lab setting. The three zones were used by the researchers to illustrate historical maize earworm trends, and they later developed a model to project past spread until the end of the century. Surprisingly, since 1981, the southern range has grown by 3%. According to the predictions, the southern range will grow twofold by the end of the century and move firmly to the north, while the other two zones will contract. Next up, how can soil temperature predict the spread of pests and crops? The researchers assert that because the insect may migrate over great distances, greater overwintering success may widen the places where it can dwell and grow. In general, the likelihood of crop damage from this pest has increased further north because of its better overwintering success in more northern latitudes. Success in overwintering is also affected by climate change. According to Douglas Lawton, a former NC State postdoctoral researcher and co-corresponding author of a paper describing the research that was published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, there is a preconceived notion that pests have little overwintering success north of 40 degrees latitude. The subject of where the species can genuinely overwinter may now be asked and answered using better data to guided information, even though it may have been true in the 1930s. Researchers created their maps overlaying the three different data sets to show three relevant geographic zones, a southern range area where pests survive over the winter months, a northern limits area where pests are typically unable to survive during the winter months, and a transitional zone in between the northern and southern areas where pests can survive. The research indicates that 40 degrees of latitude are not the best division for overwintering success. Next off, what is the impact of pests on the agricultural industry? Pests pose a serious threat. They cause two main categories of harm to crops and growth. Insects eating leaves and boring holes in stems, fruits, and or roots cause direct damage to plants as the first of these two types of damage. The second type of damage is indirect damage, in which the insects themselves cause little to no harm but infect a crop with bacteria, viruses, or fungi instead. One of the main offenders in this regard is aphids, which spread disease from plant to plant, frequently out of control as their numbers increase. Most insects obtain their food from plants. Bees live on nectar and pollen from flowers. Many bugs suck the sap or cell contents from plants as a source of food. Others, such as praying mantis, some thrips, bugs, beetles, ants, and wasps, prey on other insects. Insects may feed on the leaves, stems, roots, and flowers of plants. Feeding entirely within the leaves is called mining. Leaf miners can be found among beetles, flies, sawflies, and moths. Irregular notches along the edge of leaves are caused by various weevils, larger caterpillars, grasshoppers, and katydids. Root weevils and root maggots are examples of species that exclusively depend on plant tissue for growth. Other species of root-chewing insects eat both roots and soil organic matter, most white grubs. Some insects cause damage by cutting the plant for egg lay. Aphids and leafhoppers transmit viruses to plants. Tree crickets also lay eggs and stems and while doing so may transmit disease agents. Control of tomato spotted wilt virus can devastate a crop being started in a greenhouse. Next up, is soil temperature a health alarm for crops? According to a new study from North Carolina State University, soil temperature can be used to observe and predict the spread of corn earworm, a long-standing pest that has caused serious problems in a variety of crops such as cotton, corn, soybeans, peppers, tomatoes, and other horticultural crops. Experts may be able to anticipate issues in cut cost and environmental pollution by being able to better monitor the pest and predict where they will appear in the future. Plant growth and soil temperature are closely related. The warmth stimulates plant growth and development in terms of nutrient and water uptake. Low temperatures hinder water uptake because the water is less viscous and they slow down photosynthesis. In addition, the absence of warmth is unfavorable for the activities of earth-dwelling microorganisms because of their low metabolism and consequently low nutrient release and dissolution. Therefore, plants can access fewer nutrients and water when the land is cooler. Cold weather inhibits cell reduplications, which slows down the overall growth of roots and shoots. It alludes to both the earth and cool air. Next off, how can we measure soil temperature? Farmers began to follow specific seeding guidelines while they waited for the earth to warm up after realizing a link between the soil temperature needed for planting and the productivity of crops. The first screw technique was manual through palpation, specialized thermostats, and on-field soil temperature 
sensors were later developed. Remote sensing and satellite monitoring are the most practical and recent scientific discoveries for determining soil temperature. These techniques for measuring soil temperatures are based on evaluating the reflectance characteristics of the surface of our planet using either active or passive remote sensing. Farmland owners can stay ahead of the game at a low cost because online platforms have made significant advancements in measuring soil temperature. They can now have a general understanding of what is happening in their fields even before it happens. Next up, what are some ways to control pests? Pests are one of many annoyances that can destroy your business. They may appear innocuous, but they can create multiple issues, ranging from contamination to added expenses. With the appropriate knowledge, you can prevent, identify, and remove pests the right way. Not all insects are bad. Parasitic wasps, ladybugs, spiders, and ground beetles can be good for your garden. Look out for these garden-friendly insects and try to encourage them into your garden by planting plants that produce pollen and nectar-producing plants. Use barriers. Create a physical barrier such as a fine net to stop pests from getting to your fruit and vegetables. Companion planting. Companion planting refers to the practice of planting certain plants close to crops because they naturally repel insects. Ensure a healthy crop. Healthy soil begets stronger plants that have adequate resistance to any harm incurred by insects. Turn the soil over and add organic matter such as manure or compost before planting to provide vital nutrients. Larger pests must be removed. Wear gardening gloves and handpick larger pests such as slugs, snails, and caterpillars. Use pesticides. Many different types of pesticides are now available in stores to aid in combating and controlling undesirable pests in the garden. Slug Beer Trap It is possible to attract many garden pests into traps. Slug and snail traps made out of beer are common examples. Next up, what is the ideal temperature for the soil to grow healthy crops? The process of germination, blooming, composting, and many other activities are all influenced by the temperature of the soil. The home gardener will be able to determine when to begin seeding by learning how to measure the soil's temperature. Understanding the temperature of the soil can also assist you in deciding when to plant and how to start a compost bin. It is simple to determine the present soil temperatures, and doing so can help you develop a more abundant and lovely garden. Simply said, the soil temperature is an indicator of how warm the soil is. Most plants should be planted in soil that is between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 18 to 24 degrees Celsius. Both daytime and nighttime soil temperatures are significant. It becomes obvious that when the earth is not warm enough, biological and chemical processes in the ground are not vigorous enough to allow plants to develop properly. Additionally, they are not possible when it is below freezing. The minimum planting temperature, for instance, is 37 degrees Fahrenheit for spring wheat, 59 degrees Fahrenheit for soybeans, 50 degrees Fahrenheit for spring canola and sugar beet, and 60 degrees Fahrenheit for sunflower and millet. The most demanding bean in this regard is the dry bean, which needs 70 degrees Fahrenheit warm ground to successfully germinate and root. Farmers should be aware that sweet corn benefits from soil temperatures of at least 65 degrees Fahrenheit, while tomatoes and cucumbers require 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Watermelons, peppers, and okra are the final crops to be sown 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If soil temperature can track and forecast the movement of pests, then it must be a remarkable discovery. Agriculturalists should monitor the soil temperature to prevent the pest from becoming uncontrollable. Do you think this research will help to yield healthy crops? How will the farmers be trained to check the temperature of the soil? Make sure to let us know your thoughts down below. Thanks for watching.